This Three Beards Media podcast may contain mature themes. And if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Like the podcast. Nailed it. Woo! Hey everybody, welcome to new episode 17 of False Starts. I'm your host, Chris Shipley. As always, I'm joined by Bill Blank. Bill, how you doing tonight? Uh, I haven't smiled in three days. I thought we weren't uh, talking about that. No, I said, <laughs> no, no, I, you misread me. I said there's no way I'm not fucking talking about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, uh, we had our debut episode last night of Three Blind Refs. Yeah, I know. I was and waiting, I did. I'm I pur- waiting for you to, I to hop in. I didn't watch it. Our buddy Tim Louis uh, even commented and said, how long before Bill Blank hops on the comments? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I actually saw that because he tagged me. I saw that later. But uh, yeah, I, there, I, there was no way I was going to talk to a fucking referee last night. <laughs> uh, those guys are just like high school refs, aren't they? Yeah, they're they're high school basketball refs. Yeah, I mean that's so, that, I'm not gonna fucking hammer on high school officials. That's a completely different thing. Right. I mean, there's an element of them being just as douchey as the rest of them, but it's not even close to the same. And the stakes aren't even close to the same. Right, so, and like, they're not getting paid that kind of money either. God knows. No, no, especially like I mean, the NFL officials are you know they're six figures, but. I was a little surprised, uh, and I we're, I know we're going off topic, but I was a little surprised that um, Monday morning, I thought for sure Travis and Ross would maybe have uh, Travis's friend, uh, uh, the referee that uh, lives in Omaha with him. Yeah. I thought for sure he might have him on for reference. No way. No, and but, see, here's the thing. Like Higgins, John Higgins, that's who it is. Now they're straight up fucking lying. Now they're saying that they called a fair, one of the refs on the field called a fair catch. Fuck the fuck off. Now you're just, I mean, you just, you just got, you just admitted that you just fucked them. You and, just admitted it. And the Big Ten doubled down. And, oh, and they're so it. fucking stupid. Like, it, I mean, I get, I get that they're going to, you can point at a technicality of some kind so that you can hide behind it, but. Right. The bottom line is someone was a fuck face just to be a fuck face. Uh, here's, here's where I'm confused on this rule. So a valid fair catch, you cannot advance the ball. Right. But with an invalid fair catch, you also can't advance the ball. That's what I'm saying. It's one of those so fucking like, things like near so, miss. So what is the difference? Like it, really? Yeah. Like, what, what is the difference? You can't advance it either way. So why don't you just say if they're waving their hands, they can't advance the ball? Like, that doesn't make any sense to Yeah, you. and he didn't even wave anything. He's pointing with one arm, and he kind of goes like this. Yeah. Twice. Which like, I, I've i heard a couple of, of former special teams players, Pat McAfee, I think, yeah. uh, the guys. Oh, Pat Washington, McAfee was fucking all uh, over him. That was was like, that's, that, that's what you're taught, is to point yeah. at the ball and wave your guys away. Yeah, so it doesn't so that it doesn't end up being a fumble. It's right. just bull. It was all fucking bullshit. They know it was bullshit. That's why they're trying to say one of the refs called it a fair catch on the field. Well, if that's the case, it's a penalty. As soon as he took right. off with the ball, yes. if you called it a fair why catch, why didn't you throw your flag? Right. You fuck off. You're a liar. <laughs> they're just lying now. And I'm like, uh, I don't know. I. For those, if anybody's tuned in right now, we're talking about the punt return. The Iowa game. <laughs> they know. They know. I. This is such a perfect example of why I hate referees so much, though. Because just look at what they did. And you know, there's there, you know, that guy in Pittsburgh was jerking off at the idea of what he was about to do to 70,000 people. <laughs> 
He's the equivalent of one of those internet trolls with no name. Yeah. That just says the worst thing they can think of to people and and nobody knows who it is, you know. Yep. And so a hundred percent of all it is is the fucking guy somewhere in Pittsburgh, like the elation, the joy that I felt in that moment that 70,000 of my best friends also felt. That was electric. I, I, could, I, mean, I could, through the TV, you could feel the electricity. It was insane. And for them to just take that away. That's like, what bothers me the most is, is that they, that is that's the, what bothers me. That I, all fandom aside, Cooper DeGene that that's the greatest play I've seen in probably the last 10 years. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, he had seven guys had him dead to rights and, and yeah. Drew's right. I'm here for you, Bill blown the call dead <laughs> the field. And there's significantly less backlash. I totally agree. But I, I they didn't blow the out... call. They didn't blow it dead on the field because they didn't make the call. Right. That's exactly. why they didn't blow it dead on and the field. And you could tell, I, th- you could Some tell because at one dickhead. point, at one point the announcer said, why are they still talking? He's not out of bounds. Yeah. Like they didn't even understand what was taking them so long. Right. They were trying to find a way to fuck us. That's what was taking them so long. So a uh, friend of the pod, Jordan Bohannon, I don't know if you, uh, within minutes, ban the refs, throw them in jail, prison was exactly what he had typed yeah, out. Yeah, they uh, fucking Twitter. deserve it. <laughs> yeah. Where are the police? Get them in handcuffs right now, all in capital letters. Here is here is how this affects my mental health. This is I've been doing a lot of soul searching because not only did all that happen and not only did it just crush me, but I'm so like ashamed of my behavior. <laughs> my public behavior yeah like in retrospect like there is this cop in front of me that i should be thanking if i see him again (laughs) because he could have probably arrested me like and i've I've been thinking about it is this is this when you were at the stadium is that yeah i get cops coming over me a lot yeah during the games but usually it's like jovial Right. Because I'm in the front and I'm a lunatic. And my face looks like I might jump out there and fight. Like it does look, I know that I look like that. Like. (laughs) (laughs) Your buddy Greg Adams apparently demonstrating the fair catch. That's my dad. That's my stepdad. (laughs) Oh, is it? Okay. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, it's (laughs) That's hysterical. (laughs) But yeah. Um. That's actually from, I think that's from the Michigan State game. I think so, yeah. Um, But anyway, like, so when I'm like, I'm in the front row, I'm leaning over, you know, and I'm screaming horrible things at the refs, like, a lot of the game. Yeah. And some of them come over and they act like they're concerned for my health. (laughs) Some of them... (laughs) Some of them come over and just think it's funny that I'm so crazy. Right. Uh, you know, some of them, every once in a while I'll get a little side eye or something. Cause I don't, I, you know, I fucking, I don't center myself. Like one of my favorite things that happened this year, I don't know if I said it on this podcast or not, but, uh, Nico Nico Ragini ran into the end zone in our end zone, running a pattern. Yeah, they didn't throw the ball to him, but you know Shot. he finished out the pattern. And he's turned around, kind of jogging slowly back to the line of scrimmage, and I just yelled, "Hey!" I was like, "Hey, Nico!" It was a horseshit fucking call. <laughs> and Nico turned around, fucking thumbs up to me and shit, and was like running back to the huddle. You know, the photographer, people are down there. They're all laughing right. and shit. So, like, you know, I just, 
Like, there's, like, a little girl, like, three seats down from me, and I'm just screaming fuck at the top of my lungs and shit at these people, you know? So, like, I don't blame the guy for saying something to me. Right. The problem is, and it's not his problem, it's my problem. (laughs) (laughs) The problem is, the two things that happen to me that make me... I don't even want to say act out of character because I've I've acted like this enough that it's kind of in character, I suppose. But like the two things that will get me to where I'm like so angry that I'm actually scary or whatever to people uh, is like when I lose, I want to fight and like. That includes when my favorite team is losing. <laughs> and I don't and I don't mean that in the literal sense, but like in a situation like that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is before the putt return, by the way. But I was screaming at the refs for not calling a hold. So basically there were a couple plays on that on the drive where Minnesota kicked the field goal to go ahead that they didn't call. I I saw, like, holds and was yelling at them, right? Called them chicken shits and whatever else. And so this cop comes over to me and tells me I need to calm down. (laughs) Well, this cop, I've been sitting there for five years. This guy's never been there before. It's usually kind of the same cycle of people. So he comes over and he's never, you know, I've never seen him before. So I'm just like, fuck you, dude. Like... I mean, I was undressing this guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because fuck, I, here's what, here, this is one thing I can't stand. And I don't, I'm not saying this is a generalization. I'm, I'm talking about a certain kind of cop. Okay. Okay. I can't stand cops that think because they're cops, they're in charge. That, that if I'm not breaking the law, that they can tell me what to do. Fair. Like, fuck those guys. Right. You're not, you don't get to walk around and be everybody's dad because you have a badge on. Fuck right. off. Yep. That's not how America works. Right. And so, you know, he, he comes over and tells me to calm down. And I'm just like, you know, not going to happen, bro. Like, <laughs> right. And, and like, uh, they've, other people have come over and told me to calm down before, but like with a smile on their face, you know, like, Hey, you need to calm down. Like I said, concerned for my health. And I'm like, not going to happen. I know you're new here, but you know, whatever. And so I'm telling this guy, I'm like, you know, so I just go, I'm like, you're not in charge. I go, (laughs) I'm like (laughs) the bad, just because you have a badge that doesn't make you in charge. And this fucking guy, this is where I'm not. This is this is one thing that did still does kind of piss me off. He fucking literally looked at me with this dumb grin on his face and was like, "Yes, I am." So then it's like, "Oh, fuck now, off!" Now, right now you now you got a challenge. Yeah. So right then I just start telling him he's a little bitch and all kinds of shit and like I'm and my buddy sitting next to me. I just keep I'm looking at my buddy, but talking a whole bunch of shit about him loud enough so he can hear me mm-hmm. you know <laughs> yeah no i'm, I'm, with, I'm with you I, I... and so he comes over a couple times and's like trying to say something to me and i'm just like fuck you get out of here you know and like right i mean and you i told him like, bro- i'm not i was like i'm not breaking any right. laws you have not broken any law yeah no, i'm with like you. right i wasn't throwing shit on the field i'm just yep. you know he's like you know there's little kids over here and i'm the thing the real thing is these little kids ain't paying any attention to me. Like they don't, they're not even hearing me. Maybe they are. I don't know, but I just don't think they pay that close of attention to anything. And I'm right. yelling towards the field. Like they're over here. Sure. And this guy hears me cause he's right in front of me on the field. Right. You know, but you know, I don't and, know. You know, it's not my style, but you're at a football game. You're you're bringing people to this environment. You have every you have all kinds of a different gamut 
of fans and how they cheer and how they yell. You have to expect that if you're bringing. You kind of, yeah. You, you kind of you, have to. It's kind of what comes with the territory, right? Yeah, I mean, like Ross said to me. Ross made a great point to me, like when I was talking about the fans booing, like chanting "Fire Brian" and stuff, and how right. counterproductive that is, and how dumb it is, and stuff. You know. And he's like, yeah, it's that classic thing where you're like, why don't, why doesn't everybody fan like I fan? I want everybody to fan like I fan. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so it's kind of like that. Yeah. But, you know, in reality, like, and that's something that kind of pisses me off about Kinnick Stadium is, like, I got a, I had a buddy that got arrested at a game one time because he's standing up to like get loud on third down and the people behind him wanted him to sit down. So he's like fighting with him the whole game. He's like, no, right. you stay, it's third down, get up and get loud. What, you know, what the fuck are you right. doing? Yeah. And so they complained and the cops came and got him and like, just there's no conversation. There's no whose side of the story. Like you can literally just call and say, this guy's bothering me. Yeah. And they'll fucking come and get you. And that's not okay. No, I, it's a tough job that they have, but there is some, I, I always go back to what Paul, Paul Parisic always says, there's the law and then there's the spirit of the law, kind of the same deal, right? Like, yeah. you know, you, that's not necessarily your job probably to just drag somebody out of there because they're being a bad fan and they're bothering somebody, right? You can go over and have a conversation try to mellow the you know the situation right but to 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 pull that rank and whatever is well and these guys like outside of the scope of what you need to yeah do. well and these guys like pull my buddy out and they're trying to provoke him the whole time right like they're talking shit like they're telling him that his his wife ain't gonna fucking answer the phone when he calls and telling him yeah, what a piece see. of shit telling him he beats his wife and fucking talking all kinds of shit just trying to provoke him right you know, and that's the kind of shit I'm talking about. And these guys do it all the time. Like, you and I both, I love Paul Parizic. He's a right. great no. friend. Yep. Fucking yep. love the guy. Um, But there are way too many cops that act like that. And that's why they became cops. So they, and you, so they can. And they enjoy it. Listen, I'm I, fucking I tired a, of people acting like it doesn't yeah. fucking happen. I, I have a buddy um, growing up. He's actually a retired police officer in Las Vegas. But growing up, that's all he talked about was being a police officer. And yeah. all I could think was that dude should not be a police officer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're like you know, adrenaline I mean, like, junkies, you know? Right. And he, and he, and I, and I don't know. I, I, I lost contact with him. Maybe he turned out to be an amazing police officer. I have no right. idea. Other than the fact that I know his politics are absolutely fucking batshit crazy. Mm -hmm. But that's a whole nother story. Um, But he, just growing up, I was just like, you know, I'm not so sure that's the type of guy that I want having to be a clear headed individual and making clear headed in, con in conflict. Right. In, While dealing pressure. with people on their worst day. Right. Under you pressure. Know? You know what I mean? Right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's, I, I've said a hundred times, there's, everybody has a gamut of a job that, there's people on the spectrum that are fucking amazing at their job. And there's people on the other end of the spectrum that fucking are terrible. Mm -hmm. And that goes across the board for every, every job, whether well, it's, it's what I do, get... whether it's what you do, whether it's what uh, the police officers do and whatever else. I'll, I'll give you a great example. I've, I've been arrested one time in my life. Long story short, I had a family member that was not doing what they were supposed to be doing. My mom, went and confronted this family member and they wouldn't, and my mom would not leave the property until she got this family member out of the house. Well, the family member and my, and, and the people in that house called the police on my mom. My mom refused to leave. So they arrested her. This was in West Des Moines. So sure enough, the, the one phone call she gets, she calls my dad. Mm -hmm. So of course me and my dad go over to that house. They call the cops on us. My dad's having a conversation with the police officer. Talking to this police officer, explaining what's going on. And the dude, one of the dudes in the house comes out and he's charging right towards my dad. 
and I took about three steps into the yard to 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 you Stop know to head that guy off. Yeah. And the police officer grabbed me by the back of the jacket and yanked me back and said, "Don't you fucking go over there." And I said, "Don't put your hands on me." And I kind of you know flung him off. And and he said he said don't don't you talk to me like that. And I think I said fuck you and pointed at him, and that was it. Yeah. He arrested me. Yeah, you can't and, fucking arrest somebody for that, <laughs> I know. dude. You and just I can't. Said, and I, I said, we got in the car, and this is a legit conversation. I said, what are you arresting me for? Disorderly conduct. Disorderly contact, yeah. conduct, and anything else I can think of on the way to the station. Yeah, fuck you, you piece so, of shit. You know. So now, was there probably a better way for me to handle that? Yes, there was. And I, you know, I was in there for maybe a half an hour and they finally let me go and said, don't go back to that fucking house. Uh, which, of course, my dad. So did they never... book you? Is it like, did nope. it end up being like an official arrest? Nope. Well, they released, they released so, all mean... of us. They released all of us. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, my dad, my dad got arrested that same night and he gave them so much hell in there that he was in there for like four hours. <laughs> uh yeah and but, see that's what happened to my buddy when he <laughs> so when they took him out of the game because they just they just made it worse on him because he was like fuck you guys you know right i mean after a while the allure of it was over i was like dad just shut the fuck up so we can get yeah. out yeah but i actually the funniest part of that story was i was in the i was in the back getting booked and they were asking me all these questions, and one of the questions was, "Is where do you know where your nearest family member is?" And I looked down, and my mom's shoes were sitting right there next to the counter. And I said, "Well, I think my mom's right around the corner in the other cell." <laughs> and I walked by. They walked me by, and all in West Des Moines, they're nice little jail cells. All it is yeah. is just a big wall, and then there's a window in the door. And I walk by, and I see mom just standing there, and she looks at me. And I get put in the, in the room, and about two minutes later, they pull my mom out, and I hear my mom go, I see you're getting the whole fucking family in here, she said. <laughs> <laughs> she was just giving them all kinds of shit. Yeah, so, I but mean. It's a tangent. But anyways. But that's that's kind of what I'm getting at, where, you know, Amongst each other, those fucking that behavior is rewarded. Those guys, yeah. like that's that's their fucking gallows humor and shit. You know, like right. when they're at the job, they they talk shit about you know they they think they're punk and somebody well because they know they're a cop and nobody can do anything about it. Right, like in the moment, yeah, you know, guys got handcuffs on. You got a gun. You can talk all the shit you want. Right. And then, you know, you got this guy, like this guy that was talking to me at the game. Jesus Christ, what the, he's one of those guys, there's no reason for him to even be a cop. It's like, what, he's, he had to have weighed fucking 280. And, I mean, he's not chasing anybody down. He's not, this fucking guy serves zero purpose on the police force. Like, <laughs> Zero. I mean, price this behind a desk or something. <laughs> fucking Lynn County Sheriff fucking douche. But the point is, I kind of do. I I I should apologize to him, and I should I should because I am ashamed of how I acted. Like I right, I acted like a child, and. And that's kind of what I'm getting at is this fucking thing where when I when I lose or I experience injustice, I want to fucking fight. Like, and that call is a perfect example of just injustice, like unfairness, you know? Yep. And like that behavior early in life was rewarded. So th I think that's what why it's hard to shake. Like, Sure. When I was in high school, when I was playing baseball in high school and in college, like, if we were losing, I wanted to fight. And my coach loved me for that. Right. <laughs> like, like, my coach fucking loved that if we were losing, I wanted to fight the other team. 
I wanted to find a way. I don't know how many times we, I, me and like a couple of my teammates would try to convince our pitcher to throw at somebody and shit because we just wanted to fight. Like we were just sick of it and whatever. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> we like, and I was always that way. And it, it was something that the coaches loved about me. I was a competitor, you know, competitor and passion, right? Yeah. yeah. And there's only so many outlets for that. When you become an adult, when you're a middle-aged man, you know, that, yeah. that release of all that shit, there's an abundance of that when you're in high school and then in your twenties and, you know, now it's like, these football games I go to are one of those releases and right. you know, like just, there's just only, there's not many opportunities for that. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. As you get older, you, you're not playing sports. You're not, you're not, you don't have that outlet. Where do you, where do you work off some of that? Aggression? Well, and you can't and, apply it. Like I was able right, to go yeah. through every setback in my life. Right. I've always been able to be competitive about it. I've always found a way to win, so to speak. Right. Sure. Yep. And then, you know, like I go through my divorce and that's one of those times where it's like, I literally have to take an L right now. Right. And, and absolutely nothing I can do. Like, you know, that's I can't, of- there's no way to competitively win this. I can't win anything. There's no winning. That's, that's, that's kind of what I think I'm experiencing a little bit with some of the things going on, whether it's my professional life or, or whatever else that I feel like I've said a couple times, I feel like I should be farther along in life than I am. Mm-hmm. And I'm angry about it. And I used to be able to just like, when, when I got cancer, I, I, in my head, I, that was a fight. So I, I made sure that I did exactly what the doctor did. And I had things under, under my control that I could control as well. Mm-hmm. And I, and it was, it was in me, it was a personal battle that I was absolutely just not going to let them win. And mm-hmm. that's what fueled me through that entire process. But now with this thing now, I, there's, I feel like there's so many things out of my hands that I can't control that it makes me angry, sad, depressed sometimes. You know what when I mean? You say, when you say not as far along, um, where, what does that mean exactly? Is there, is there a, a concrete definition to that? I mean, what does it's that even really me. mean? It's if a feeling so- for me. It's so I, this probably goes back to, again, what we've talked about with me for the last few months, as far as me having certain expectations and and not meeting those expectations. So, and I, I I'm going to be really vulnerable here. I've always grown up, not resenting, but wishing that I had or had the ability or the opportunity to do things that other people have done. Right. Mm -hmm. So I look at things like I'm 52 years old. Uh, I have a great job, but it's still a job that I look at and go, somebody that's 52 years old with the amount of experience that I have and things like that should, should have a higher role and more responsibility and a bigger avenue in my career than I do. I'm doing some entry level stuff and I'm 52 years old and I shouldn't be doing that. Uh, I look at, I mean, I I have a beautiful home and and things like that, but you know, I, I see my friends sometimes that are just like, Oh, out of the blue, they're going to take a week and they're going to go on vacation with their wife and things like that. And I, I don't have means to do that right now. I look at my retirement package and think I, that's, that's not enough of what I need to, to, to be to where I'm not going to have to work long. And yeah. part of that yeah. is because I worked, I worked 15 for my dad in the store and we didn't have, 
you know, benefits. retirement and yeah. benefits and things like that. So it's just things like that that I, I look at and go. Shit that's know, done I, for I you. Sh- I should be farther along in a career and I'm not. And, and when I was looking for the job that I got, there was a lot of time I would look at and I would go, okay, the group of jobs over here is so beneath because it's, it's entry level. Mm-hmm. It's I've done that before. I don't want to go back to that. I certainly don't want to make that low amount of money. But the things that I felt like I could do and I should be able to do and I know in my heart I can do, I just don't have that enough work experience that's going to get me in the door to get me an interview. And that was a frustrating process for months. Yeah. So that's what I mean when I say I should be farther along. Like I look at things like, uh, I, for a while I was looking at, at some project manager's job and things like that. Uh, my organization skills are, are off the charts. I know I can do those types of things, but I never anywhere in my career had an opportunity to do something like that, to add it to a resume or add my experience. Mm-hmm. Whereas now people will look at me and go, well, he's 52 years old, almost 53 years old. He doesn't have any of this stuff. Why would I hire him when I could hire this 37 year old guy who's done this for the last five years? Those are the things that were frustrating. Yeah. Well, and you've probably got to think a little bit of that as your own brain lying to you. Like, maybe your age ain't got shit to do with it. When, you know, when those guys are right. deciding to hire the 37 year old guy. Like, right. Your age ain't got shit to do with that. And I mean, as far as further along goes, um, You know, if I mean, if I thought like that, I wouldn't be here. I mean, I'd have blown my fucking head off if I thought like that. Like, I spent 20 plus years just doing stand up comedy, not getting famous, not progressing really, you know, beyond a certain level. I mean, you know, it took years to get to the, the level that I got to, but levels are you know who defines that right. you know i was basically a career opener you know i headlined shows nothing I, I headlined a lot of shows but none that mattered or anything you know like right wasn't getting famous wasn't you know but i was buying paying my bills with mm-hmm. with stand up but but designing my bills around that not having much for bills that i didn't right. have shit yep you know, now I'm spending all this money. I'm building a bar in my house right now. I'm doing all this stuff and, and all that's fine and dandy. But like, I think about that too, you know, retirement of some kind and blah, blah, blah. Well, you, you know, you've got property. Right. I mean, <laughs> end of the day, you're not going to fucking not eat, you know? I mean, at some point you can sell your shit and you can live off of it and you're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. No, I, <laughs> Right. I get it. You know, Listen, the old man like, said all the time that you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. Fuck no. So, I mean, hundred so. percent. People are going to fucking throw most of your shit away. People, right. Some are going to buy it. Like none of it's, none of it's going to matter. Are you, are you around people that you love all the time? Yep. Are you around people that love you all the time? Uh, do you, you know, do those people support you? Is everyone eating and clothed? And do you have luxuries? Absolutely. Right. Plenty sure. of them. Uh, I mean, at the end of the day, really, that's the only things that matter. I mean, I've, I kind of have a thing where I kind of want, I, I kind of need to drive a nice car. I like to have a nice luxury car. Right. And we talked something about I always that. aspired to growing right. up. It's yep. just something I wanted. So it's not like I got a brand new fucking hundred thousand dollar car. You know, right. I got yeah. that one. that's kind of older that used to be, it was $80,000 when it was new, I think. Right. <laughs> but like, 
you know, <clears throat> but it's great and I feel good in it and I like yep. it. And uh, I want to be able to have the entertainment that I want. I want to, I want to buy my season tickets and go yep. to the games. I want to, um, I want to still do the road when I can. I want to, you know, you and I talked to Michael off the air about a project and right. You know, Michael and I are going to talk about that next week. I'm, I'm going to do stuff like that, but it doesn't have to be the be all end all of everything anymore. Right. You know, yeah, I've, I've, <clears throat> I've gone through this identity crisis the last several years and, you know, I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, on the surface, I, I have, I, I, I've never had shit for retirement, you know, right. that's part of why I fought to keep my house in my divorce. Mm. That's, yeah. This house is kind of my retirement. So right. I'm trying to make this house as worth as much as I possibly sure. can. Yep. But like, uh, you know, well, that I, was I, I, I'm just trying to give you, I guess, some kind of unsolicited no, I, you, positive. You are. Like, you are. And I think know. a lot of people our age go, go through what I 100%. Can experience a, a little bit. And I, Listen, I, I, I want to make sure we're clear. I, I 15, 20 years ago, I was in a I was in a marriage and a and a life that uh, I was barely making enough money to pay my bills every month. I was mm -hmm. putting money on a credit card to to get to get by every month. Uh, shit, I'd get my I'd get my my tax return back and I'd have to use that to pay off the bulk of the credit cards that I would have. I had a second mortgage on a house because of bills and whatever there, I mean, it was every month I was, I was living literally paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. Um, and was in a marriage that I was absolutely miserable in. Um, and a house that was literally crumbling around me. I mean, we had a foundation problem in the house that I had no idea how I was going to fix. Um, and I, I'm not like that anymore. I, I'm in a I'm in a marriage that is equal partners. I, I I I live in a nice house that we comfortably can 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 make payments on uh, financially well. Anything that we've done to this house, we've been able to pay cash for. I'm not strapped for that kind of stuff. So why am I still feeling that way? I I mean it, I I I feel that way and then immediately feel guilty for feeling that way. Oh, uh, well, I think some of that has to do with your, your, your change in all of your worldviews. Now you're turning into fucking guilty white liberal guy. That's a, <laughs> it's a comfortable space for me. <laughs> uh, uh, Don't it do me. No, I get it. I was just talking to my buddy about this, like, you know, my buddy's wife just lost both of her parents in the last year and he lost his dad. Uh, you know, we're having a good time, you know, we're tailgating and stuff. And I remember saying to them, like, do you don't feel guilty about having a good time right now? Like, I know that's in your head. Like if you're having a good time right now, it's like, you're not sad enough or something. Like, right. fuck that shit. You're going to end up the same place they are someday. No, I, like, that's not, that's, that's not how I feel when I, no, I'm that, not, I'm not saying that, you are, I'm not yeah. saying you do. I'm, I'm just talking about a different, you know, kind of another example of like, when you're talking about feeling guilty, you know what I mean? Right. Like then all of a sudden you feel guilty for thinking that way. Cause you should yeah. be, you're fine. You're good. Right. And you feel good. Like, all that is is just kind of it's a I think that's a very human need to feel like you're constantly progressing. Yeah. So I think I think what it's right. really coming down to for you is you where's your next evolution gonna come from? Right. Like, you know, we've all I people um there's like a Shakespearean thing or something that life, you know, life occurs in three acts. And I talked yeah. about that with Bohannon when he was on here. I you know, I think um you know, it's the third act, probably, you know. I think it, it ramped up for me uh, when I got sick because I did some really deep soul searching when I got. Started really thinking about how much and, time, yeah. Yeah, and how much 
I didn't accomplish and how much I I wanted to um I wanted to live life. You know what I mean? And shortly after I got the clear and whatever, we had um a friend of ours down the street whose wife uh got diagnosed with cancer and she was gone in five months. She was gone in five months. And he immediately like I think after after a couple months, like he bought a brand new uh Dodge Challenger scat pack car and then he went and bought a motorcycle. And I remember my wife and some friends going, oh, I can't believe he's doing that and whatever else. And I and I would sat there and I thought, you know what? I kind of get it. Like, yeah. what what are you working for if right. you can't enjoy it? Right. You know, the man lost his lost his wife. How, he, what, what's he? How's he going to experience joy now? Right. Gonna buy I mean, some fucking toys. I I mean, and and it's no, I I I mean, I just think I in. I, I just related back to me and I thought I don't I don't want to I don't want to just work my entire life and not experience life. Well yeah, I and, mean that's and and I could see why he would want to do that. Um and Stacy and I had a lot of conversations that next year about how we would always be cautious about like spending money on this or spending money on that because we wanted to make sure that thing, other things were taken care of and whatever. And I remember us, both of us coming to a conversation about, I, I, we make enough money that we can enjoy it. So if that means that we want to impromptu take a trip together and go away, we should be able to do that. Yeah. You know, if we want to, if we want to, spend a little bit more money on the kitchen remodel or whatever we should be able to do that because we want to enjoy it what are we what are we working here for you can't take it you with you I mean? man right you can't take it with you and it's been but but when i sit here and say things like i wish i was farther enough along then i sometimes think now i'm just being a greedy bastard now i i want more and more and is that that's probably not there's a happy medium there is what I'm it's saying. like more and more for what? When's that stop? Right. Right. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Here's where I'm at, Chris. And I think maybe you can maybe you can benefit from coming to the dark side. I don't know. <laughs> but I am no longer concerned with accomplishing shit. I don't give a fuck. If I accomplish nothing the rest of my life, all I want to do from now on is have fun. I'm going to have as much fun as I can. And if it's not fun, I'm not fucking doing it. Period. I'm fucking done people pleasing. I'm not going to do things that I don't want to do that I'm not going to enjoy just because other people want me to. I'm not doing that shit anymore. I am 100% living the rest of my life having as much fun as I possibly can. And I don't see any reason to bother with anything else. Yes, I have to go make money somehow. But that still doesn't change the fact. Like, even if I was broke, I could still spend the rest of my life just doing what's fun. Right. And, uh... I don't see anything wrong with that. I, I, I'm not, I am not concerned with leveling up to anything. I'm concerned with paying for the things that I need. Right. And just having fun. I'm going to, I'm going to spend my money on having fun. I'm going to, I'm going to do things that might make me money that are fun. I'm going to invest in fun things that could possibly make me money. I'm not going to fucking, you know, like I, I, I'm friends with several people that have several different kinds of businesses, right? Um, Different, different ideas. We're all bouncing around. I mean, you know, the special thing that I want to do, right. I'm going to invest in that. I'm going to, 
you know, my son and I have have decided to start our own um, wrestling promotion. I'm going to invest in that. All that shit's going to be fun. And if it ain't fun, I ain't fucking doing it. I mean, there's been times like my son said (laughs) when we first, he was like, well, if you're running a wrestling promotion, you're going to have to be careful, like the stuff that you say on Facebook and stuff. And I was like, well, then we're not running a fucking wrestling promotion. (laughs) Because I'm not going to be careful about what what I say on Facebook. Listen, I'm with you on that. I I remember uh, when I, when at one point when I wasn't getting a job and Mm -hmm. some, family members had at the time I was doing a daily podcast of just getting my thoughts out there every day. It was politics or how I felt about job searches or whatever else. And then, you know, I had old man strength going and we had three beards media and everything else. And the family member had said, well, maybe, maybe he's not getting a job because people have come across what he said on some of his podcasts or on his social media. And I was like, if that's the reason why I'm not getting a job, then they don't want to hire me because that's who I am. Yeah. I don't want to so, work for them. So, so they're going to be awfully fucking disappointed if they hire me and then find out who I am later. Yeah. So, you know, and then it turns out I got a job from somebody that followed me on Twitter. So, you know, was that, <laughs> uh, I just recently, I just recently met my first pro-life female that wasn't a fucking troll. That was weird as fuck. <laughs> I ain't ever met a fucking pro-life chick that anybody wanted to fuck anyway. Okay. <laughs> we always get to this part where I think maybe now it's time to take a break. I'm just <laughs> saying, dude. <laughs> uh, we were going to talk about something. No, Have you? Well, uh, no. <laughs> I mean, now, I granted, suppose, here's the thing. What I... Usually, if it's a female opinion, it's religious. It's, a, it's based on religious reasons. Uh, and so, even if they are attractive, you can still kind of see why people wouldn't want to fuck them. Okay. <laughs> uh, see, what's funny is it sounds so misogynistic. It does. But I'm being pro-choice, so it's so not. That's the duality of Bill Blank right there in a nutshell. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, all right, we're going to take a break, and then when we come back, I want to finish this conversation. We can forget what we were going to talk about, because I think this is a good conversation. All right. So we're going to get a break, uh, get a word from our sponsor, Rebelton uh, Distilling Company, uh, and then we'll come back. At Revelton Distilling Company, everyone has become a part of the Revelton family. From the Taylors and their daughter who helped perfect their award-winning gins, to the team who installed Lucy, our 33-foot tall custom-made still, right down to the local farms that provide our coveted corn, and even the cows on those farms who consume our mash byproduct. Want to see the farm to flask come to life? Now you can tour Lucy and find out where we take Iowa's harvest and transform it into our finest spirits. Choose between a 45-minute tour or find out even more by scheduling a VIP behind-the-scenes tour to get the taste of the full Revelton experience. You can visit them at 1400 West Clay Street in Osceola, Iowa, or find all of Revelton's award-winning spirits at any local grocery or spirits retailer. All right, we're back. Uh, We are uh, Fall Starts uh, with Bill Blank and Chris Shipley. Everybody uh, just kind of keep a, a date open, December 9th. Uh, we're going to have a pretty special event down there at Revelton. Uh, you'll be able to meet Bill, be able to meet me, a bunch of other people from Three Beards Media. So we're setting that up. We'll have some details later on. But So, Bill, we were talking about before Who wants the break. To meet? Nobody wants to meet me. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. I better have a fucking line, dude. You better I, promote this. I, I, I better be sitting at a table. My, I better get oh, we're crap. doing a live recording. We're going to do a live recording of each podcast for like 10 or 15 minutes all. Oh, we we can't do that. Ours is going to be an hour. (laughs) No way. (laughs) (laughs) Go ahead. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, So we were talking about um, just expectations and things like that. And I just kind of wanted to put a bow on it. As far as I'm concerned, 
I, I, I think, like I said before, with with being sick and things like that, those things kind of came into perspective. Um, and to your point, when you were talking about buying stuff that you want to do that are fun, that's one of the things that I've kind of invested in these last few years when it comes to Iowa State football and tailgating. Mm-hmm. I, I I have bought all kinds of stuff for tailgates. Uh, it's my guilty pleasure to load up the car and kind of be in charge of that. And, you know, we set up a big tailgate and, you know, we have friends come over and we're having drinks and then we go mm-hmm. to the game. That costs a lot of money and I and it's totally worth it to me because Me too. Yeah. I, I won't I won't miss one this year. I, I get six home games. Yeah. That's it. That's and it. And when you put it into perspective of only six home games, I'm gonna maximize my fun. Yeah. Every one of those six games. Yeah, I would say that on top of my ticket, I mean that's my I tell people all the time that's my camping. People that go camping every weekend for the summer. They buy their camper and they do all that shit and they spend yeah. all that money. You know, um, that's what football season is for me. I, me and my friends, we coordinate, you know, a different one of us is responsible for food each week, but we drive up together. We, so we can take up three parking spots next to each other and we can set everything up, have plenty of room and, uh, you know, and yeah, I mean, I spend, I mean, I spend probably at least $200 more a week on top of my tickets and everything else yeah uh just going you know and but it's worth every penny i have the time of my fucking life no matter what and um but i'm not even necessarily talking about monetary thing i'm just saying i'm not (laughs) i'm so done with I mean, what does this accomplish? What what think about the word accomplishment? Just just the very definition of that word. And when you think about the definition of the word accomplishment, who the fuck decided what an accomplishment is just in general? Like, isn't that something that you would just decide on your own? Yeah. Right? It should be. It should be. Yeah. But but we've all, it's the same thing as success. I've always said success is self-defined. For me, success was always, did I eat with jokes? Did jokes feed me this yeah. week, this month, this year? The answer was yes, I was a success. Doesn't matter what that meant. Doesn't matter if I lived in somebody's basement. Doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Somebody else might say I'm not a success, but do they why, have to live my life? I right. mean, and why does their opinion matter? Yeah. It matters if you got if you're insecure. Dion's and that's what line. we all and that's what we all deal with. Dion's not, line. Do I look like somebody that cares what you think? Yeah. I mean, it, it's I mean for all his pomp and circumstance, some of that shit hits pretty home. Well, I don't know anybody happier than Deion Sanders right now. <laughs> no doubt about that. There's no doubt about that. Uh, hate him, love him, whatever. Right. Deion Sanders is a happy motherfucker right now. Yep. Every single day of his life. He wakes up every day happy. Ecstatic. What what you said about expectation or what you said about accomplishments and things like that right. all go back to that line that you gave and I wish I could remember it. What expectations are the enemy of peace? The enemy of peace. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, it, I you that resonates so much because I mean, you just boil that down and just think about what that statement means. Mm-hmm. It it's it's so true. Well, it's just, you know, again, you know, when you say things like, I just, I wish I had accomplished more. Well, what were your goals? You know? Yeah. Did you reach those goals? If you set a goal and you didn't reach it, a personal goal, you know, why did you set that goal? Not, not just the goal itself, but why did you set it? Like, 
did you set the goal to have, you know, let's say I'll just use myself. Like I, I someday, um, I weirdly have always associated success with the number of TVs in your house. My, uh, I always thought of my grandparents as being rich, you know, they had the Hyperion membership and they, you know, <laughs> drove Cadillacs. And yep. My grandparents had TVs in pretty much every room of the house had a TV. Yeah. And growing up, that was crazy. We had one TV. Right. That's the family TV. I mean, eventually there was an old TV in my room, you know, but you couldn't even watch TV on it. You could play video games. But like, so, like, I always, now I, I couldn't even tell you how many TVs I have in my house. It's fucking insane. I have them I have everywhere. Three, I have three in this room yeah. alone. And they're so, so like, cheap. It's, no, it's right, nothing yeah. now. Right. So, like, but it's just one of those things. Now, if I think about that, that was something that I was able to accomplish without ever getting rich, without ever doing anything crazy, just because TVs got cheap. But now I had, but I, that's a goal almost that I set. Let's, you know, now yeah. if I set the goal to have a whole bunch of TVs, because I thought that if I had a whole bunch of TVs, everybody that came to my house would think I was really successful. If yeah. I said it then for that reason, then who gives a fuck if I accomplished it or not? Right. But if I set that goal just for my own personal Hey, I want to have a TV in every room because that's fun for me. I I also now think I've it's... accomplished I accomplished the goal of right. having more fun in my house. I also think that it's um it's perspective and it's uh the only way I can explain it is a, a good example is today Andrew Downs announced that he was leaving KXNO. You know, it's funny you say um, that. I just got a text from him. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think he, I was going to, I was wait. I thought we were going to get there. I was getting ready to tell him that we were going to shout him out. Cause I was going to bring him up yeah. actually. He, uh, he, he actually, uh, liked, uh, the post uh, of our podcast a few minutes ago. So, oh, nice. So maybe he watched a little bit, but his, and I, and kudos to him. He's, he's going to go do what he wants to do. He wants to move on. That's great. But in my mind, you would look at him and you would think he's program director of the, the most popular radio station in central Iowa, mm -hmm. that would be a dream job for somebody. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. would be, to me, that is the epitome of successful mm -hmm. is to be able to have a job like that and be on the radio every day and be able to, to work with legends like Keith Murphy mm -hmm. and, and, and things like that. And, you know, or, or Ross's job in the morning and being on, on the radio in the morning and things mm -hmm. like that. And you look at that and, and you think, man, I, I would love to do that for a living because in my mind, that's successful. Right. It's all perspective. Yeah. Well, I think that some people, um, no matter what you're doing, if you do it enough, you can get bored with it. And yeah, you know, I haven't talked to Andrew about his reasons and i don't i'll he'll give me his reasons if he wants to i'm not going to ask right. him. right yeah it's not my business right. but um if i were if i were to guess um just kind of personality wise just based on conversations over the years and just kind of knowing him what i do know of him um i think that he's someone that uh, is an ever evolving person and something about his evolution in his mind, he needed to move on Yeah, to evolve in some other way. Um, you know, there's also, so um, you're also the thing you're also talking about is iHeartRadio and that's a huge conglomerate company right. corporation. Yeah. They are not um, personal. They are, a, no. you're a number. It's a cold hearted I mean, company. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there could be things behind the scenes that he didn't like and he didn't want to deal sure. with anymore. Yep. You know? Um, but that's what I mean when I say the, from perspective, the outside looking yeah. at you would think 
people were thinking, God, I can't believe he's going to leave that job. Right. That would be a dream job for some people. Well, and they, pe- out- people also don't a lot of times understand that because everybody wants to do radio. Yeah. It doesn't pay very well. Right. <laughs> right. There's a lot of people out there that take advantage of the fact that, that people want to do it so badly that they'll do it for free. I, I interviewed for a job once at WHO TV for a marketing job when I was looking for a job mm-hmm. and uh, they were ready to hire me on the spot. And then I found out it was going to pay half of what I normally make. Yeah. And I remember saying something to Elias Johnson. I've gotten to be friends with Elias Johnson and his response was welcome to the world of TV and radio. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, and I think that, I think that Andrew may have come to the conclusion that a lot of people come to um even though they're doing something that they love and that they aspired to do you know because like i said it's not in and ranger was a program director i don't know salary rise what that was like right you know i I don't even want to guess but it's a if you're on that level he probably had to work a lot harder than people think on a daily basis and he's not a personality He's not a radio personality yep. anymore. He's the boss. Right. And on and top he of that, was covering. He's, yeah, he's also producing shows, yeah. right? He was, he, he, I think he covered the, the Well, he's producing for, Murph and Andy every day. Yeah. And then he was so, covering the drive for several months. Right. And so he's, you know, so, he's getting run ragged. And maybe, yep. maybe he came to the conclusion that if he worked that hard on literally anything else, he'd make a shit ton of money. And probably have more time for his family. Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. That, you know, something like that probably crept into his head at some point. And, you know, his wife, Judy, is, uh, she's on, is she still on the school board in Urbandale? I think so. I think Um, so. Yeah. So I think she, you know, she might have. Yeah. And she's heavily involved in the community. She might have some higher cause community aspirations and maybe he wants to go along on that ride yep you know i mean i, th- I think it's great but i mean i think it's great i, I think I, it's I, fantastic when somebody right. does something like that by choice I, and, and it's and you brave know yes fuck. it is stacy uh, stacy has said to me a few times when i've been unhappy about a job or whatever she's like listen i'd give up whatever you want to give up if it meant that you were working at a job that paid less and you were just happy every day yeah. You yeah, know? I mean, it's that's why I resisted day jobs for so long. You know? Yeah. It didn't matter what was happening in comedy, if it was slow, whatever, you know, it was feast or fame in business. I just resigned myself to that. And I didn't care because I knew going to the same place every day for eight hours was gonna make me fucking miserable. And it did. Whenever I had to do it, my whole life it did. It made me fucking miserable. So yeah. I uh, I don't blame anybody for just you know. And I, I think I honestly I don't know. I mean, I haven't again. I haven't talked to Andrew, but it looks like he's open. It doesn't look like he's leaving. Good, go, go do something in particular right now. Right. It's, yep. It's like what's up, you know? So. Uh, Don't think that I didn't tell him that there wasn't an open mic for him over here at Three Beards Media. Yeah. Because <laughs> uh, I'm sure that's exactly what he wants. Yeah. To do. Well, maybe he does, though. Maybe he just wants to be on the mic and not fucking worry about it. He might. Right. You just know? turn on the mic and just do it. And then uh, he's got opinions. He has shit. things to say. He's a smart guy. He is. Um, But anyway, we love you, Andrew, if you happen to be watching. Uh, but yeah, he sent me a text and was almost apologetic that he announced it publicly before he told me. And he said, I don't fucking care about that, dude. <laughs> uh, I just hadn't gotten around to, I was actually going to text him. I wasn't going to be the guy that comments so that everybody else knows I know him, you know. Oh, I did that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know hey. what, to be honest with you, I forgot I had his phone number until just now. Oh, that's funny. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'll, you know, I was going to send him a text and wish him well. And, you know, if he wanted to get into any details, I'm sure he would. But right. again, yeah. uh, he doesn't have to do that. 
Doesn't have to explain shit to me. Uh, but I, I do want to re. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I do want to revisit the 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 thing about me that makes me want to fight when I lose. Yeah, let's 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 close up with that. Um, I think that's a good. We'll we'll wrap it up with that. I'm gonna, you know, I I feel I think maybe I have therapy next week, the week after. You know what? I was supposed to have therapy today, and I had to cancel it. Mm, that's and I was I, and I was sad. Yeah, that's that's how much I look forward to it. Good, I'm glad you're looking some, forward to some, it because there's came up. There's been times came up where with the boys and and I couldn't make it, and I called, and I literally got home with the boys, and I and I called and had to to reschedule. And I sat on the couch and I was a little sad yeah. because I was looking forward to just being able to go and be completely open and honest. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, there's freedom in it for sure. Yep. But I'm going to bring this. I mean, I think, you know, this is one of those things that uh, I've really got to get a handle on. I got to figure out. You know, I I would have been disgusted if I watched someone act like I did. Like, I'm telling the story and it's funny and I'm still fucking, I still got my jabs in on the guy and whatever. Right. And yeah, it's funny and blah, blah, blah. But like. It's a funny story, but at the end of the day. I don't day, feel good about myself. Right. Yeah. I, like, I don't, I don't. When I remember the situation and everything, I don't remember it fondly. Right. You know? Like, I mean, even, like, my buddy's, like, trying to get me to stop, you know? But he's laughing, he's giggling, telling me to stop. Because I have another friend that's just like me. Like, when we're pissed off, we say funny shit still. Yeah. You know? So, like... Right, yeah. <laughs> it's like... But I'm not fucking around, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. You're, you're dead serious. But I'm aware. I'm actually right. aware that I'm saying something funny. Because it's just the way my But there's a tiny works. bit. There's a tiny bit of seriousness to it. Oh, no, it's 100% serious. Yeah. I just know that it's funny. I know right. what I said yeah. was funny. You know what yeah. I mean? Just intellectually. Yep. But... Uh, You know, I've just got to figure out. Because I just don't care. Like, I know, like, in the moment, I know. I know I'm not doing the right thing. Right. Literally know it. But I'm so pissed off, I don't fucking care. Yeah. Like, it's like I just don't have any, all of a sudden, I don't have any self-control. Right. Right. And that's a prop like that's a, like I was watching. Uh, have you seen that old dads on Netflix movie? Bill Burr's actually in it. Oh, you know what? I saw it pop up and I really want to watch fucking it. Great. It's because hilarious. First of all, I think Bill Burr, Bill Burr is the funniest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah, he's great. He he is great. Yeah. And I know we've gotten into that whole story, but anyway, he, uh, He's the main character of this movie, and um, there's a moment where his his wife's like snapping on him, and she and his wife says to him, "Like because you have the self control of a fucking two year old," <laughs> and that like totally hit home for me, and that's exactly what I was thinking. Was like, wow, I had the self control of a fucking two year old. Like I was throwing a tantrum, more or less. Uh, you know like i was yeah, i was i know i you know i get it and it's just weird how those things got reward you know like i you look at like back in the day like the baseball like billy martin fucking throwing dirt and kicking dirt on the up and yeah you know that kind of shit everybody thought that shit was funny yep you know and it's, it's like you grow up and thinking like well, I'm a competitor, you know? I mean, at what point am I just being a fucking lunatic? I, You know what, though, Bill? If if, if, we're, if we're being true to ourselves, 
you just said that there's certain things that bring you joy in life and that you want to do and you want to have fun. And when Iowa football games are your enjoyment and you're passionate about that, at the end of the day, you didn't hurt anybody. No, I didn't. For you know sure. what I mean? And you wouldn't hurt anybody. You know what I mean? No, it's not of like, course not. Not like you're not going to jump over and, you know, and. and no, I don't lose control like right. that. But that's part of the passion that you have for <laughs> Iowa football. I mean, it's yeah. the same. You know, listen, I, I, I can't. And those fucking refs took it away. I, you know, All listen, that I posted, joy, you know. I posted the other day. I said, I said, it's funny. I don't remember uh, local sports talk radio using their entire day of airtime to talk about these four travesties that Iowa State got. Yeah. By. You know, so it's the same thing, right? Like, I. Oh, so I, you had to fucking make it about you. Jesus I did. I had, to make it about, I had to make it about us. Well, none of those were this bad. Is <laughs> oh, the I, biggest thing. I, I beg to Like, this it. is... Well, I I'm talking about... You're taking. You're actually taking away, like, an, an uh, one of the most amazing plays ever. Okay. And a touchdown, yeah, right. a game-winning touchdown, literally. Okay. You know what I mean? There was one, though. There was a game-saving fumble. Like Texas was on the one yard line and they fumbled and Jeremiah George recovered mm -hmm. and ran it and 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 that was the game we had stopped him and they called it they called it that he that he didn't fumble when he crossed the goal line and it clearly was not and they beat oh. us on that so it is but you're right that that was an amazing I I will not take yeah. anything away from Cooper well it's just like there's no like this one there's no debating no. You know, no. at the very least, on that they're like it even was a goal Iowa line State thing, fans. Like, you know, there was yeah. a, there was tons of I Iowa mean. State fans. The only and, people and just, that the only people and just that fans it. across and just yeah. fans across the the country of college football that were like, that's a complete fucking horseshit. Well, anybody ball. that knows football, I mean, look at all the guys like Pat, Matt, Aaron Rodgers is talking. Any all these guys that played a bazillion snaps right. of football on the highest level are going, that's bullshit. Yep. Like the only people saying it's not are Minnesota fans. And people right. that hate Iowa enough, and they're fucking and they're act, they're know. strapping that fucking pig over there on national TV. Oh my god! I saw they took it at the, to the fucking Vikings game. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Well, PJ. in 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 their defense, I had one they, in have, eight years. they haven't spent they haven't spent a, that pig has not spent a lot of time. In no, it hasn't. <laughs> so. And it still shouldn't be there, those <laughs> motherfuckers. Right. But, All right. but like I'm saying, like I, I just, I've got to get to the bottom of, um, I don't know. Maybe I don't. Maybe just realizing I, that out of, in all this reflection that maybe next time I will check myself a little better. But you know, I, I sometimes use therapy to to validate my feelings. Yeah. You know. What well, I mean? if my, you hear from somebody else and they go. No, Bill, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. I, I did that two weeks ago. You know, I had some family issues going on. And I was like, I'm just going to lay this out in a truthful manner. You tell me if I'm crazy or not. Right. And, you know, at the end of the at the end of the 45 minutes, he was like, you, you did, no, you're not crazy. Like, that's that shit's out of line. Right. You know what I mean? So, and yeah. And sometimes I mean, it's, feel better. I'm not. You know, one of the things that my ex-wife was telling me as she was leaving me was how I didn't want any responsibility. And I don't, you know, I, and, you know, in a way, now that I think about it, it's like, you know what? I think you're right. Like, <laughs> uh, I don't, like, basically what she was basically saying is like, you don't want to deal with any stress. You don't want to, you know. You don't want to deal with all the stuff normal adults got to deal with all the time. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I don't. And neither do you. And right. so I try to find a way not to. And yeah. are you fucking jealous that I don't walk around stressed out all day? <laughs> I mean, I don't get it. So, right. like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I if it stresses me out, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing shit that's stressful anymore. I'm just not. It's not worth it. It's not. It's not, not even worth remotely it. worth it. No. Like, I'm not doing shit that I don't want to do anymore. I'm just Life's not. too short for that. No, oh, I'm fucking done, bro. And honestly, most of the people that have been around me my whole life will be will tell you that that's nothing new. Honestly, but I mean, I, I've known. But I don't think it's they. They've never lived in my brain, so they right. don't know that it's not true. I've you known know? you. Uh, I think six years, six seven years. 
something like that. Uh, uh, and we've just gotten to be good friends probably in here in the last few years. Um, but I mean, it was evident from the time on that you, I think sometimes you sell yourself short. I said this the last time and we'll, <laughs> we'll end with this. Uh, I'm, I'm very privileged to be able to sit down and talk to you every two weeks because the conversations that we have and this perspective that you have, uh, always makes me think and always makes me figure some things out. And, you know, I'll, I'll just say the very first interaction in time that I ever had with you was you were kind enough to do a, a comedy show for a charity event that I had done mm -hmm. and you, and you didn't know me for more than five minutes on the radio. So, right, yeah. um, so yeah, fuck your ex-wife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> and with that, we are going to close out another episode of False Starts. Uh, Thanks everybody for listening. We appreciate it. Go check out all the rest of the content on Freebeards Media. Uh, we got a new host for Side of the Storm. <clears throat> uh, Three Blind Mice just started. Uh, Hot Mess Happy Hour recorded an episode today. Uh, we're bringing on Jim Walden. Uh, former Iowa State coach from the late '80s on Old Man Strength here. Soon. God, I fucking like so, him. I like Jim Walden. I oh, Jim I Walden. fucking hated him when I was a kid, but uh, when I got older, man, I cannot wait to talk to that guy. I, I found so, him to just be a fucking. And I'm gonna joy. dive into a little bit of some Jim Zobel uh, memories too with him. Good, yeah. Really oh Zobel, man, so. he's he is so, a fucking national treasure, man. So with that, right. uh, check out our have sponsor, a good time Robert with that. Stone That'll be great. Bill, thank you so much. We are out.